Welcome back everyone. My name is Riley. Thank you for joining me today on the channel. For those of you who are new, appreciate you checking it out. And for those of you who are my long-term subscribers, I really appreciate you tuning in yet again. This week, we're going to get into something that isn't quite as pleasant, but something that people should know about. And that is the downside of breeding snakes and what can go wrong. So, we're going to get into that right now. So, right behind me here is what is typically my quarantine enclosure, but for now it's being used as a convalescent enclosure. And yeah, what that means is something went wrong. So, uh, it's a very sterile enclosure, water bowl, hide, heated with a thermostat on paper to keep it extra clean for me to be able to see things. This is not quarantine. This is a snake that I've had for five years. So if any of you follow my Instagram, you'll know that a couple days ago I posted a pretty brutal photo that I'll put right here of my female blacktail Kribo, and we had a little mishap. So uh, it is the start of breeding season for this species, and um, my male is definitely ready to go, but the female is still kind of getting there. So I've been introducing them and then pulling them apart for feeding and things have been great, but uh, things don't always stay great. And I'm very fortunate that my girlfriend Rachel was home when things decided not to be great. So let's take a look at her and we'll talk about what happened. So I'm going to attempt to do this with one hand, but here she is, this is my girl Smokey. And with this species, males are much larger than females at maturity. So my male's about seven feet. This girl's just shy of six. And he's considerably larger and thicker all around. Well, here you can see they don't look too bad right now because they're full of um, SSD cream, which is silver sulfadiazine cream, which is, you know, prescribed for burns and cuts and things like that. So when I rushed home, because my girlfriend called me at work, told me the snakes were killing each other and trying to eat each other. Oh boy. I got home as fast as I could and her head was in the mouth of the male, like full on. The only part that was not out was her lower jaw, which is what kept her from being fully consumed before I got there. But she had a bite on his lower jaw. So they were in this death lock, but he was obviously much bigger and did a lot more damage. He's actually completely unscathed. Um, which is good because one snake being wounded is better than two. But as you can see, come here. She's still a little worse for wear. But at the time, I didn't think she was going to make it. She was exhausted. She was lethargic. It looked like she had been run over by a car. And here she is behaving completely normal. In fact, uh, hours after I gotten her uh, unlatched and cleaned up and set up in there, she was hunting around looking for food. So uh, she's still got some healing to do. She's got some, some tissue in her mouth that needs to kind of slough off or heal or something. But good Lord, was that a traumatic thing. I mean, I could see the, the muscle tissue in her jaws. I could see her being just exhausted and wiped out. There was blood all over the place. It was just it was really unpleasant. And uh, I think my girlfriend and I are more traumatized than anything, but this is something that you got to know when you're getting into snakes that are known snake eaters. The entire genus of dry Marcon will eat other snakes. So something to be mindful of because this can happen. Now, what do I think went wrong? I think the male was ready and the female just wasn't. And, uh, and she was cruising around and moving and he flinched and had a feeding response and grabbed her. That's that's exactly what I think. And uh, they're both gentle snakes. They can both be handled and picked up no problem. Um, but as anybody who works with Dry Mark on know, when it's a feeding response, they're pretty serious. They're about as aggressive as a retic for food. So fortunately, um, she made it through the, that first night and uh, she's been fantastic ever since. I'm actually fa uh, planning on feeding her a little bit today. Um, but not pleasant, not pleasant at all. She's been cruising around and checking it all out and basically behaving perfectly normal. Um, so 
I don't know. It's uh, it's making me really gun shy about the project, but I have consulted with some of the top dry Marcon mines out there, and they said, "Oh, you'd be surprised what these things can take. They can take some serious beating, serious abuse, and they'll be just fine." And I'm starting to believe it after seeing her, because I'm cleaning those wounds with uh, Novasan, reapplying SSD, keeping the, the the sites clean, and promoting healing, and it's it's been amazing what's happened in the last 48 hours because this happened on Saturday. You're watching this now on Wednesday. So I don't know. So let's go take a walk into the snake room and I'll kind of break down the scenario for you of exactly what happened and uh, kind of walk you through it because everything was good until it wasn't. And uh, I don't know. So her enclosure, the males is down there. Oftentimes with Kribos, you want to move the male into the female's enclosure. She's got hides in there specific for her, so she was able to get away, no problem. He doesn't fit in those. And he was actually pretty cordial. He wasn't pursuing her, so for a few days they were great. And all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Tails flapping around and flying was how it was described to me. And uh, my girlfriend was on point. She grabbed some snake hooks, pulled them out, got them on the floor, got me on speakerphone. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to get them unlocked on their own using water, uh, disinfectant, things like that around their nose to try and kind of upset them and get them to let go. They were just so locked in on one another that one of them would have eventually gotten exhausted and probably died and then the other one would have eaten them or tried and who knows what would have happened after. So it could have been way worse. Now a lot of folks are going to say, well, what are you doing putting them together? What are you doing leaving them? Well, that's how they breed. You can't do it if you don't put them together. So you run the risk of this happening when you breed snake-eating species. So for any of you who are typing out some fierce criticism on the bottom, when you're done, hit that delete button. Because I'm not going to care. I'm not going to read it anyway. But I thought for sure this season would be a wash. Talking with some folks that are big dry Marcon breeders are like, nah, she'll be good. Clean her up, make sure the wounds heal, and try her again in a month. Which was like... If these guys have that much confidence in these animals, then I'm clearly freaking out and overreacting. So, that being said, I'm going to keep a real close eye on her, and we'll just take it day by day. The reason I wanted to share this is because everybody's all, Ooh, breeding's glorious, and I'm cutting eggs, and look at all this money I'm going to make, and blah, blah, blah. And nobody will tell you exactly how they've screwed up, any failures... They might like give you a little hints where animals just stop showing up on their feed and things like that. But uh, I'm here to tell you not everything is, you know, rainbows and roses. So it does happen. If any of you are building Kribo projects or dry mark on projects, I hope this doesn't discourage you. I hope this encourages you to get to know your animals even better and just be really, really on top of things because... I thought we were comfortable. I've been working with these two snakes for seven and five years, so this was quite a shock. I even tried pairing them last season, and uh, nothing happened. And then, you know, they had been together for a week prior to this. Um, so, it just happened out of the blue. So, we'll see how it goes. I'll uh, I'll keep you all updated. I'll, I'll hopefully have more content to share with, with the female as she's healing, and I can show you guys exactly how impressive her her regenerating abilities are so to speak so uh, but yeah that's that's all i have for you this week it's not a very glamorous or exciting one and uh because of that one photo it's probably a little gory so anyway but that's the reality if you don't like it then maybe snake breeding isn't for you or at least dry mark on art but if you can stomach that then keep going because we need more people working with these you know, uncommon, less trendy species in order to keep our reptile hobby a nice, well-rounded hobby. So anyway, that's all I have for you this week. I wish I could show you a nice, happy Kribo in the cage mating with the male, but that'll have to wait. So thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for hanging out this week, and we'll catch you all next week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video, share the account. Let's get this growing and going and it's having a ton of fun. So thanks for sticking with me. Once again, my name is Riley and I'll catch you all next week. Peace.